Thanks for coming. Um, this uh, panel discussion is meant to be about uh, venture capitalists' uh, view on OpenStack and infrastructure in general, particularly in Asia. So I have three uh, distinguished panelists today, and uh, we'll all go around and uh, introduce ourselves. So uh, go right ahead. Hi, uh, I'm a Suzuki from Global Brain, and uh, Global Brain is a Japanese independent venture capital firm, and uh, we manage about $250 million venture fund. And we have offices in Silicon Valley and uh, Seoul and Singapore. And uh, basically, we have focus on the mainly IT sectors and mainly maybe early stage or middle stage venture companies, uh, both Japanese and also overseas venture companies. And we have a major LPs like KDDI, which is Japanese number two mobile carriers, and also INCG, which is a Mr. Inoue's company. And uh, yeah, so. Well, I'm Hiroshi Baba from Entity Dot Ventures. Actually, I was from Entity from Ventures because, and I need to confess that um, a human resource kind of periodical uh, kind of exchange obliged me to move to the Dokuma headquarters. So after the submission to this panel. So uh, actually, I need to, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce Entity Docomo Ventures. Uh, Entity Docomo Ventures operate two funds, one for NTT and the other for Docomo. So uh, as a whole, uh, we are kind of uh, corporate venture capital for NTT groups. And uh, investment uh, has uh, focusing on uh, local uh, Japanese startups and also global exposure. And uh, portfolio diversified from applications companies to infrastructure, infrastructure companies. So um, uh, basically, uh, we have uh, more than 350 uh, US million dollars fund sites. So um, that's the kind of what we are doing. Hi there. Uh, my name is Inoue Tako, and, and the, I'm currently working at uh, IMCJ, uh, that Suzuki I mentioned. That the IMCJ itself is the uh, government back investment firm. And the, we started operation uh, back in 2009 uh, with a 15-year peers. And the, we, uh, we have the investment hours up to uh, 20 billion US dollars as a total. And the, we, made, uh, we cover the, uh, the, from the buyout to the venture investment. And also, uh, we, uh, we are doing several fund investment as well. And the, we, uh, we made invest uh, for 90 companies in past, um, uh, past six years, and the uh, two sides of the investment was uh, to venture in industry. And the, uh, I think you know, I personally share with you that I, uh, we made an investment for the middle core almost uh, two years ago, and the, I'm still uh, sitting on the board, and that's the story. And I'm Dan Dimitri, I'm the CEO of Midokura, and uh, I was asked to moderate this panel, which is great, because I'm usually the one uh, being asked questions by these guys. <laughs> so this is cool. OK, so uh, forgive me for looking at my phone. I have a bad memory, and I have some notes. So um, my first question is, what do you think about the market potential of OpenStack and cloud computing infrastructure, particularly in Asia? Because that's where we are here. Uh. I think it's huge, and uh, you know, from a maybe you know venture capital point of view, you know, it has a huge impact for startups, and because uh, basically, you know, open stacks or maybe open source enable maybe startups startups to maybe launch their services with a lower you know capital expenditure, and uh, which is maybe good for startups. And uh, these days, maybe you might you know hear about maybe a high valuation of venture companies these days, and I think you know it is maybe you know it is maybe part of Reason is uh, maybe uh, you know penetration of maybe open stack open you know sources and because uh, I think you know uh, you can easily maybe create uh, you know maybe closed beta or commercial service without uh, maybe uh, requirement of maybe uh, 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 huge capital. So maybe you know after you launch a service, maybe you can go to uh, maybe investors like us and maybe ask them about maybe investment. But uh, at that time, you already have uh, your services, you know, which is already launched, and you already maybe can show them uh, maybe traction, and which maybe uh, makes maybe, uh, you know, market value of the companies, you know, much higher. And uh, so that's my idea, so. so um, for me, actually, from two different aspects. One is as a kind of open source company, well, um, Previous investment for a U.S. Uh, open source database company, the track record was very uh, kind of steadily growing, but it's slow. So, uh, one of the kind of character characteristics for a venture company for or infrastructure open source is normally uh, takes some time to really uh, growing up. 
But uh, the good thing is it's kind of consistently growing. So I think uh, it takes a little while, but uh, the business will go uh, kind of growing up and up. And the other aspects for Asian companies, uh, I think uh, the most notable uh, field is uh, commerce. Because and, uh, especially for uh, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, the road construction is uh, getting better, and uh, FTA, so kind of legal structure, infrastructure is getting better. And also one more thing is uh, FinTech. Actually, there are many companies uh, focusing on a FinTech, and uh, the circumstances in uh, Southeast Asia is uh, a little bit complicated because in different language, different currency. So technology needs to fulfill the gap between those kind of, uh, kind of complexity. So I think uh, uh, cloud systems and uh, those kind of uh, fintech uh, kind of background, uh, kind of startups company will be easily start a business on commerce and then the opportunity is very good. So I think I'd like to focus on uh, the kind of commerce area in Southeast Asia, especially for Southeast Asia, an Asian as a whole. Well, I think uh, I have the other uh, the Suzuki san or the Baba san comment. I personally focus on for Japanese market because my company is backed by Japanese government, so we have to have a Japanese story. But the, I think uh, to if you would like to start the, the consumer service based on the cloud, uh, as Suzuki san already mentioned, that it's easy to to start and also not made us some scale up. And the, I personally think that the, there is another uh, trend that the, uh, in the enterprise IT, IT infrastructure is now uh, using the uh, cloud or the virtualization. And the, some uh, surveys show that the, in the uh, near future, not like in a three to five years period, I think in the most of the, uh, I think in the more than 80% of the company will use the cloud or the high uh, virtualization in somehow. So I, uh, it will be a good chance to uh, penetrate into the uh, enterprise market as well. So uh, by using OpenStack, uh, I think an OpenStack is now becoming a very popular or the dominant position in the cloud OS market. So you can uh, access to the, uh, your customers by, by, by using the, the OpenStack ecosystem. And the, I have to say that, the, but the, the people or the, uh, the, from the, the customer point of view, they would like to use the cloud, not the open stack. I, I think you have to care careful about those things. Thank you. So it certainly sounds like the market opportunity is very large across the continent. Um, my next question relates to the competition. How does OpenStack compete with two traditional forces, the, uh, the traditional vendors like VMware, Cisco potentially, and on the other side, the public clouds like Amazon, AWS, and Azure. How does OpenStack compete with these forces? Okay. You, uh, you don't have to answer in order, by the way. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Frank is speaking, so I'm not the engineer, so maybe, you know, uh, I can't maybe ask, uh, you know, maybe uh, correctly, but, uh, you know, maybe uh, from, uh, you know, you know, investor point of view, I, I think, you know, uh, you know, OpenStack community needs, like, maybe brand awareness, and the recognition among maybe uh, you know executives of maybe uh, big enterprises and also investor communities, and that's a uh, one of the challenges. And uh, uh, maybe I have to confess, but uh, before I came here, so you know I, I talked to my you know colleagues in my farm, and uh, like I so I asked ask question like you know do you know OpenStack actually? And uh, I asked to ten you know guys, and uh, two of ten know about open stocks, but the eight don't know. So that's the issue, and I mean, that might be issue of our company, but uh, actually, you know, everybody know about maybe uh, Amazon's AWS, or but uh, you know, other maybe cloud system, but uh, open stock, you know, has a little maybe a short history, you know, in comparison with uh, maybe other maybe uh, infrastructure. And so maybe uh, it's important for maybe community to maybe educate, like uh, maybe mass communication, mass media, or maybe uh, just normal people and uh, to maybe create uh, maybe brand awareness and recognition, yeah. Well, for uh, answering that question, actually, I prepared two boring kind of items, and one is uh, ecosystem, the other one is customer. That in general, but I think uh, the detail is a little slightly different. 
Um, and those two are closely related. So I, I imagine AWS, for example, uh, they have a lot of tons of uh, tools and, and, and documents and everything is up on the cloud, on the AWS, uh, mm -hmm. AWS servers. So um, uh, developers can easily start and then easily kind of copy the codes and uh, so those things really help uh, the engineers and, and, and developers. But for uh, OpenStack, I think it's a little bit different way. Uh, ecosystems will be more manual and human resource based, I think. That's my understanding. Because then, um, one of the reasons is probably the demand from the end user is a more kind of cutting edge, innovative idea, and uh, the demand is literally higher level. So the kind of granularity of up, uh, applying those kind of demand, so AWS is like, it's, it's kind of piece of uh, kind of stacks. But for OpenStack community, um, I think uh, people will s support to fulfill those kind of demand and actual uh, core systems. So I think in order to evolve OpenStack, um, I think uh, the eco ecosystems surrounding um, OpenStack community, the people, system integrators, engineers, those people are very important. And additionally, finding cutting edge customers, high level demand, and uh, sophisticated idea. So I think uh, OpenStack can support from kind of low cost and, uh, and kind of fast growing uh, community ideas. So I think those two things, customer and uh, community, is one of the key, po key uh, components to grow. Well, I think uh, in terms of the competitiveness to the other crowd op uh, alternatives, I think you know, as a community, uh, we have to think about the the total roadmap uh, for the uh, crowd use case. Now, I mean. It always has a variety of services on their uh, ecosystem, but the, there is some missing piece uh, in the uh, OpenStack ecosystem. So what kind of the, uh, the feature you have to uh, add uh, in your future uh, with the uh, community, or the, uh, how do you fulfill uh, those gaps? That's the one uh, aspect about the competitiveness as a total ecosystem. And the other uh, point of view is the recognition in the market. I think the open stack has now become very popular, especially for the engineering. Now, thinking about the past three years, I think there are several other stacks, like you know, cloud stack or Eucalyptus. But now become open stack is now uh, a dominant position in the cloud OS, especially for the private cloud. But the uh, Suzuki mentioned that the the, uh, the recognition in other category, like in the business or the management side, uh, there is a, uh, we have to uh, to show the more notable showcase. Very easy to understand what kind of features you can provide on what kind of uh, the uh, the impact to the uh, IT IT system. I think, you know, of course, there is several session now uh, talking about the uh, use case. But see, uh, we have to have a more uh, easy to understand notable showcase. That is the next uh, step for the OpenStack community. So uh, in the US, a lot of the big companies have started developing this uh, DevOps capability in-house. And I know traditionally that has been less so in the big Japanese companies. Baba-san, you know you're working at, uh, at Docomo. And uh, a greater reliance on vendors or system integrators. Do you think that's going to be a, a hindrance to adoption of OpenStack in across Asia? Well, um, yeah, I think um, I don't know about I don't know really about in Asia as a whole. But for for Docomo, actually, we have several options to uh, on 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 cloud systems, including AWS and OpenStack. So. Um, um, so entity as a whole, actually, we have several uh, options. And then it depends on what kind of businesses we'd, we'd like to focus on. For example, it's a more application side, then AWS may be handy. And more for enterprise businesses, OpenStack will be uh, probably appropriate. So I think it depends on um, the aspect. But I think it's 
uh, we can be flexible to adopt uh, those new technologies. Can I add one thing? I think that we have to think about the market by country or the region because uh, there is a uh, different uh, structure uh, in each economy or each nation. For example, in Japan, uh, we have strong SIRs and the, most of the engineers. I, I, I hear that uh, the, the three out of the four, now, so more than 70% of the engineer is working uh, in the uh, system integrators. So, but the, in the US, I think the, the, the number is totally uh, different. I think more than 70% uh, engineer is working uh, in the user side. So we, from the, if you have an engineer within your organization, it's easy to deploy the open stack within your organization. But the, if you don't have the uh, engineer or the uh, capable CIO in, in your organization, you have to rely on the uh, SIS. I think like in a Southeast Asian country or the uh, East Asian country have uh, its different structure in the engineering uh, ecosystem. So we have to care about the, uh, what kind of the market you'd like to penetrate into, and the, uh, it, it, it totally depends on the, the country or region. So that's my point. So speaking of the uh, OpenStack itself and the ecosystem, how much do you think that uh, open source is a, uh, a helpful driver for penetration in these organizations? I, I think it's a very, you know, important, and uh, maybe, you know, uh, uh, even in Japan, maybe big companies, they already maybe, uh, you know, utilize uh, maybe open source, maybe software, maybe uh, regularly, and so, you know, uh, so I think there is uh, maybe a possibility in maybe Japanese big enterprise, which can maybe uh, easily uh, maybe uh, shift to uh, maybe uh, open stack, you know, based on the fact that they already maybe uh, utilize uh, open source, you know, internally, so. For using an open source space, uh, there are, I think, two things is really, two things, two difficulty actually, to adapt. Uh, one is uh, the reliance and reliability, because and normally uh, open source is new technology, and uh, large corporations are very risk averse to adapt new those technologies. So, track record example, case studies are huge, huge things. And the second item is probably, uh, especially for adapting new technology by way of SIR, the price gap really matters. For example, um, kind of established company already have customer base ecosystems and vendors relationship. And the margin for these kind of SIRs are relatively higher. Mm -hmm. And then open source is basically from zero. So the margin are relatively kind of small. So uh, the motivation for SIR to adapt uh, open source based technologies normally is less than kind of established kind of systems. So those two things, kind of price point and uh, track record, those two things are very kind of key issues for, for open source. That's very, that's very interesting because you said that actually the, the low cost of open source or the perceived low cost of open source can actually e hinder adoption in that sense. That sounds like an opportunity, though. Maybe something for you guys to fund new SIRs that are building things on open source. So yeah, actually it depends on the kind of types of the SIRs and customers. So that that actually exactly uh, happening. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, so if uh, some here here we are. We're in Japan, and I think. A lot of the visitors at the OpenStack are from Japan and some of the vendors as well. So if uh, some entrepreneur approaches you with some idea for infrastructure, for an infrastructure product or service, um, how do you evaluate that? What do you want to see normally in their, in their presentation in a pitch? I think you know, it's a very simple and basically we review firstly team and secondly maybe technology and uh, maybe business model. And thirdly, about maybe a market opportunities and uh, uh, regarding maybe uh, investment in uh, you know infrastructure type venture companies. Uh, frankly speaking, we just have a few you know portal companies. You know, we just have one you know software defined storage venture company, and also we have uh, you know some you know, other companies. But uh, uh, also you know uh, we have some you know 
captains which have uh, maybe background of engineers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, that's an important point. And uh, actually, so I'm not an engineer, so maybe it's hard for me to maybe uh, evaluate maybe uh, such a companies in terms of technology. But uh, we have such a maybe team, especially focus on uh, maybe IT due diligence. Then they can read the uh, you know, source code and kind of things. And uh, so uh, maybe uh, we review you know from such a maybe aspect. Yeah. In order to evaluate uh, uh, the infrastructure company, I think. From the VC point of view, it's similar to other, other startups company, but I'm more focused on the scope and more focused on the people. And scope really matters because um, kind, of, it's kind of historical legacy systems really focus on a switch, switch is a switch. But for a newer kind of frontier businesses, switch is not just a switch. It's changed a little bit, kind of entire kind of ecosystems and, and uh, whole systems. So. Uh, wider view perspectives really change the kind of business structure. So kind of scope is important. And the people actually uh, have some background on specific area, engineering, server side, anything uh, related to those kind of infrastructure has some kind of, uh, kind of issues or problem. Then those problems or issues has generated the idea to the new frontier. So I think the kind of experience of kind of people and um, the scope. And Midokura is probably a little bit different because that's a kind of outlier because I'm just curious how new, kind of new technology, emerging technology, uh, network virtualization is really new, new word in 2010. So I was just curious, curiosity kind of made the investment. So it's an outlier. Okay, great. <laughs> well, no, I I just want to share with you about the, the different point of view. I'm trying to ask uh, during the business plan discussion, I'm trying to ask you know, two questions. One is the, how do you compete against the AWS? Because you know, I already mentioned that uh, the cloud user would like to use the cloud, not the open stack. So if so, you have to think about the, what kind of service menu, re, uh, related service menu that is the AWS is preparing or the, they start the operation. And the other question is, the, how do you take a position uh, if the Gartner or the IDC uh, make a report on the real industry? Because as I already said, that's the, now uh, the total cloud ecosystem is becoming a, a layered uh, the industry. So you have to find your uh, position or the, your value, uh, value proposition, you know, what kind of uh, position you have to take? So that is the question I try to ask. So actually, I need to kind of, uh, kind of it, Midoka is not outlier. Actually, in addition to those things, and I, I was curious. <laughs> That's kind of okay. correction. Oh, wait, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, so I said I wasn't going to ask any. I'm going to ask a harder question just for the, okay. just for fun. You know, so <laughs> one, one, of the, one of the difficulties, I think, as I hear, you know, for startups, uh, particularly infrastructure in, uh, in Asia, is the exit, the exit opportunity. You know, if you start a small company in Palo Alto, it's quite likely or possible to get acquired by, you know, somebody down the road. How are the exit opportunities in Asia? How, have, how are they now and how do you see that evolving? I think, as you may know, so in the States, maybe your major exit, you know, is uh, M and A by a big companies, and, and but in Japan, the situation is totally different. And uh, we have just a quite maybe uh, less maybe uh, enterprises which are willing to maybe acquire venture companies, unfortunately. And but uh, uh, I'd like to maybe emphasize that maybe, but uh, I think so. We have very good maybe IPO market in Japan, especially maybe Mothers, which is uh, maybe operated by a uh, Tokyo Stock Exchange, and. Uh, it's not like maybe Nasdaq, but in comparison with maybe other you know, emerging market uh, in the Asian countries, so Japanese mother's market is doing so-so. And uh, actually, so every year, maybe some good maybe uh, venture companies uh, you know, go public. And so maybe uh, if you have a good technology and uh, so also, you know, even, you know, revenue is small, but you have a good chance uh, to go IPO in Japan. And uh, so basically, you know, Japanese market mother is very flexible. So even you know, you just have a maybe a red wing, but uh, you know, if you have a maybe growth story, 
And if you have a strong technology, maybe uh, you can maybe try IPO in Japan. So that's my answer. Um, in addition to IPO opportunity, actually, I'd like to answer to your question by uh, the ask from the aspect of M and A. Well, um, to be honest, there are two types of companies in Japan. One is a legacy company; the other one is fast-growing companies. For example, Rakuten or uh, Yahoo Japan is a kind of fast-growing company, and DNA agree, and Telco like us uh, are kind of kind of legacy companies. So, legacy companies has historically uh, kind of would like to be in a neutral position. So that is, in other words, we like to choose um, several options and pick up one of them. And then next year, we would like to choose some other kind of, uh, kind of options. So we would like to keep away from committing to one thing. So we we like to be in a kind of neutral position. That really matters to to do the M&A for, for infrastructure. So uh, emerging companies, fast growing companies, has no hesitation to acquire those kind of new technology, emerging uh, technologies. So I think um, over years, maybe five years, 10 years, M&A opportunity will be getting higher. So that's my expectations. I think that I totally agree with the Baba san that the uh, country, the, the first growing company, uh, at least in Japan, the Rakuten or uh, uh, Yahoo is very active for, uh, for M&A. But see, some uh, legacy company is still seeing the how, how they collaborate with the startups. So now from the acquire point of view, I think that there is three stages. Uh, for the startup company. One is the seeing the technology. So it's kind of very uh, small numbers, like you know, uh, less than 10 digits. And if you have a product and a market, maybe you can uh, reach to the, the 100 million as a total. And the, once you can become a profitable, I think they could uh, buy a profit. So what kind of revenue you would like to reach or what do you try to achieve uh, during uh, your company? That is the, uh, the target you have to set. Just a small follow-up on that. Uh, yeah, so I Go ahead. Some comment, uh, you know, based on the, my experiences, and actually, so we work with a KDDI, which mm -hmm. is a Japanese big telco company, and uh, uh, we launched a corporate venture capital fund for KDDI, uh, you know, two years ago. And since then, so uh, we have invested in maybe more than 20 or 30 venture companies in Japan and also overseas. And actually, KDDI uh, directly acquired maybe several companies from funds portfolio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, maybe even KDDI, which is, a, you know, maybe legacy big companies, but, uh, you know, uh, they are maybe a uh, bit changing these days and maybe they are very much uh, interested in open innovation with venture companies, or maybe some companies are maybe uh, you know willing to maybe acquire some venture companies. So, yeah, the situation is a bit changing. I think. Yeah. That sounds that sounds good. Sounds like uh, good prospects for for the future. Great. <laughs> well, uh, actually, Takasan in KDDI really has great exposure to the venture community. And so far, NTT groups and Docomo groups are not like Takashi-san people. So, uh, but for, to be honest, um, for KD, even the, for KDEI, um, the acquisition is more focusing on the application side or service side. Mm -hmm. So infrastructure is still difficult for KDEI. I think that's my sense. And um, I, to be honest, I, uh, one of the things I like to mention for Docomo is actually about uh, network function virtualization. Uh, Docomo is n historically uh, has uh, kind of option to uh, communicate with the vendors already existed. But last year, actually th this year, uh, we opened up the opportunity for everybody to uh, proposal mm -hmm. for, for uh, network fun function virtualization. So oh, open tender. Yeah. For, yeah. So Good. slightly different. Mm. Great. Yeah. But so talking about infrastructure, 
in general, IT infrastructure, that, those companies typically have been the legacy, NEC, Fujitsu, Hitachi, etc. Do you see them changing? To me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, uh, uh, actually, it's a very difficult question for Docomo. Um, <laughs> it's not just a kind of systems and switches or, uh, you know, um, our communication is for devices itself. Five years ago, Fujitsu, Panasonic, and NEC, everybody there. And now we have Galaxy and Apple. So, you know, the basic trades and kind of communication changed. changed. And also, uh, kind of network systems also have kind of slightly different uh, types of communications. And um, even Docomo, actually, recently we have, um, it's not really open yet, but uh, we like to be open for everybody. And um, it's, not, it's not an open innovation, but a kind of idea for open innovation, the idea of an agile uh, development has gradually uh, kind of recognizable in, in Docomo's world. Mm -hmm. I think in jail, the, uh, the legacy company trying to change, then they adapt the new technology from startups. But they, uh, there is several discussion within their organization because uh, in most cases, they have uh, several resembling research projects within their organization. So you have to think or the, you have to find a supporter with, uh, with the potential partners. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, because, you know, in case of the uh, NTT group as a total, that be really, a uh, huge investment for the R&D. And the, I think you know, they cover almost the, all the topic re, uh, relating the uh, network re, uh, related business or technology. So you have to, f uh, to make a differentiation with, within the internal project. Uh, or the in, in some cases, you have to support the internal project as well. That will be approach. Uh, because you know, they try to adapt the new technology because you know, they, they have to compete in the world war market. So that is a very difficult uh, difficulty uh, in infrastructure business. So I, I think maybe, uh, you know, uh, regarding big guys like maybe Fujitsu NEC or even IBM, you know, mm. are, are, you know, basically they have very high cost of structure and, and based on legacy technologies and also a bunch of senior guys. And, and so even IBM, you know, has suffered from maybe a decreasing of the maybe revenue continuously and because of the maybe penetration of the crowd. And uh, so there is a, uh, you know, cannibalization clearly. And mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's tough time for maybe big, you know, IT enterprises, you know, to adopt this, you know, new era. Yeah. Right. Well, I will point out IBM did shed a lot of businesses uh, the, in the last few years. Okay. Thank you very much. I, uh, that's uh, the list of my questions. Are there any questions from the audience? I will bring the microphone. Hi, uh, this is uh, Deepak from India. So I just want to ask Christian, uh, uh, what about the strategy or that somebody is uh, interested in opening a company, a startup in India, right? Or some other developing nations. So what is the strategy to invest or how should we approach to you? I was a cool setting, please. Yeah. So, uh, how do other country people in Asia will approach to you for investment? Okay. Uh, actually, you know, okay, you are from India, right? And actually, uh, we have one portal company in India based on Bangalore, uh, which is not a uh, you know infrastructure-based company, but which is a tech company. But uh, 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 my recognition is that so India is uh, market is growing rapidly, and they, you have uh, maybe. Uh, you know, large population and also, you know, uh, economy is growing rapidly. And but uh, this is just my personal opinion. But uh, these days, maybe your uh, Indian ventures valuation is so high and very expensive to us. And uh, because of maybe some investment from like uh, maybe soft banks, you know, they invest in uh, maybe some venture companies, Indian venture companies with a very high valuation and. Uh, so, you know, it's hard for us to maybe follow, you know, such a maybe high variation, yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Gen generally speaking, I think the question was, yeah. how does someone from outside Japan go about approaching you for, uh, 
for an investment? Uh, actually, you know, uh, regarding our firm, we have office in Singapore, and the Singapore office covers basically India and the other region, you know, uh, and uh, uh, so, and also maybe uh, sometimes maybe uh, uh, I was contacted by through maybe a LinkedIn or maybe other method, and uh, uh, basically as in that case, maybe uh, we have maybe a conference call with them. And uh, maybe in some case, maybe yeah, we can meet directly, face to face, maybe in Singapore or maybe India. Yeah. So. Yeah. No other questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all.